right, so if you're wondering who is in that video, you see that uh, insert, it's the, right, the man just right here uh, sitting uh, next to me, uh, Mr. Nicholas Pompey Monia. I wish I got the name right. And he's the, uh, the founder, the chairman uh, of APO Group. Thank you very much for your time today, Thank you Mr. For Nicholas. Hi, Derek. Great. Uh, but then, I mean, let's, let's start uh, the conversation running. Mm -hmm. If one, I mean, chance into you and asks, who is Mr. Nicholas at Pompey Monia? Uh, I mean, your personality, your profile, who are you? Well, I, I used to be a journalist, mm -hmm. uh, a correspondent uh, in Europe of uh, a media based in Gabon mm -hmm. uh, called Gabon News. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was uh, reporting on uh, all the uh, news happening uh, related to Africa in Europe, you know. And, uh, and then at some point, uh, I created uh, APU Group. As you know, APU stands for African Press Organization. It's an acronym, right? Yeah. The initial idea uh, was 16 years ago, mm. uh, was to uh, help uh, African media to access, uh, you know, relevant press releases and, uh, on a, in a timely manner. Mm. Also, uh, and I, I should say mostly, to make sure the international media have access to the press studies issued by African institutions. Mm. You know, at the time, it was uh, all narrative about uh, Africa, the hopeless continent, etc., yeah. etc. Yeah. Uh, but there were good news already coming from the continent. Mm. Uh, the only problem is that the international uh, media never received those news. So I created a, a press studies distribution to uh, make sure uh, the international media will receive the press studies from the African Development Bank, the Pan-African mm. Parliament, the African Union Commission, etc. That's how it all. Uh, all started, and okay. today we are doing press release distribution, but also public relation on a pan-African scale with clients like FIFA, NBA, Basketball Africa League, uh, yeah. but I'm sure Rugby Africa, I'm sure we'll discuss that. Absolutely. Uh, but then if people don't know, you started this APO group uh, way back in 2007, mm -hmm. and I understand that you just had to start it with about 10,000 euros, if I'm right. Yeah. How did it come up with that? That's, that's a peanut, isn't it? Yeah, well, How did you well, manage to come up with listen, that? Listen, I started with, uh, with 10,000 euros. I started with a computer. Uh, I started with internet. Were you alone during the time? Oh, yeah. And I was, uh, well, I was alone, yeah. I mean, I mean you didn't have people to no, 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 help you. No, no, you no, just no, started no, alone. No, no. I started alone. I started yeah. alone. Uh, I started alone. Uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, it was quite, quite a journey. Mm. So, uh, as I said, I started with 10K. I started with a laptop, uh, internet connection, and... Uh, and uh, drive you know uh, it was mostly about um, uh, identify that um, you know as a journalist uh, 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 as a journalist from an african media based in europe i have a clarity on the way european media were depicting africa and i knew it wasn't fair at all i knew it wasn't uh, uh, a clear uh, a real a true okay. reflection of what was happening on the continent okay. you know at the time already the african development bank was uh, starting to talk about uh, the rise of uh, african middle class etc they were good news mm. Uh, and so um, uh, it, uh, it uh, created a frustration. Okay. Uh, you know, I thought it wasn't fair. Mm. So I had a drive. You know, when you have a drive, you, uh, you can do, you can do a lot of things. So I, uh, I gathered all those press services coming from African Development Bank, you know, all these African institutions. Mm. I uh, uh, standardized them in the same format, which is the NewsML format, which is the international standard for news dissemination across the world. Okay. And I went to Bloomberg, I went to Reuters, I went to... Uh, uh, the news aggregators, the biggest, largest news aggregator in the world. And I told them, listen, I have African content. It's mm. free. Mm. Please uh, share it with the international media. Mm. Uh, so that's how it started. And then, yeah, you know, I moved from zero. Uh, I mean, I moved from one to 150 plus staff. Okay. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, was, it was a journey. But it took me 16 years. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but then what, I mean, but when was that fateful day when you got up one day from your bed and said that you wanted to do this? And what was the vision behind it? Uh, when, I mean, you gathered the money, the 10K, that you, I mean, you actually invested to start this. Yeah. When was that faithful? First of all, when was that faithful day you got up and think about that, I want to do this? And what was the vision and the motive behind it in the first place? Well, I mean, I, I may surprise you, but I'm giving lectures in, in universities when I'm when traveling across Africa, but mm. uh, it always surprised people. I, I didn't start it as a business okay. at all. Okay. I mean, it wasn't, I didn't start it to, 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 to make money or whatever. In fact, some people don't believe me when I say that, but I, I swear it's true. Mm. I wasn't even aware press release distribution was a business, structured business. Like, wow. as a journalist, mm. I was receiving press release. I didn't even really, really gather that some big players, like big companies, were making hundreds of millions distributing press release. It was a huge industry. Okay. Uh, talking 15 years ago, right? So I didn't start this business. I started because, as I said, uh, I, I find it very unfair. Mm. 
Uh, I know Africa is not a country. I know uh, out of the 54 countries, there will always be one, two, three, four, five countries which are, you know, uh, having uh, conflicts, etc. Mm. But uh, but we also know that uh, there are good news across the continent. Yeah. And you know the the tendency, the propension, the uh, media, international media, have to focus on uh, uh, bad news. You know. Mm. But by doing that, you you are you know you're creating a narrative. You're building a narrative uh, about Africa, uh, for Africa, uh, which is uh, which is. Um, um, you know, which is not fair, which is not true, which is not a true reflection, mm. and that doesn't help. That doesn't help for development of the continent. Okay. So the idea was to counterbalance, you know, uh, by pouring a lot of good news mm. uh, in the in the mix, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's what we did. We did that with sport. So, uh, uh, for instance, one of the uh, first thing we did with sport was to, uh, after um, ten years uh, down the line, you know, when the company was big enough, mm. uh, we contacted Rugby Africa, the governing body of rugby in Africa at the time. Mm. We trained their communication managers across mm. the continent. Mm. Uh, we explained to them how to uh, uh, properly package a press release and why it's important to add a picture and what okay. kind of picture and okay. the social media and what is a B-roll, a video B-roll, etc. Okay. And uh, the, the, you know, the um, um, effect it has is that obviously mm. African rugby produced, uh, the federation produced more content mm. in better quality mm. and then we distributed that content. Mm. And so we show the international media, the BBC, the CNN, etc., that uh, uh, they, uh, th there was rugby outside of South Africa, okay. and there were women playing rugby in Libya, mm. uh, there were Muslim women playing rugby in Ghana, etc., wow. uh, etc. Et mm. You know, we show the world that uh, uh, there is a, about Africa, it's not only about poverty, misery, whatever, 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 you know, um, because sport is, is, uh, is about that, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, um, we, we're going to dive straight into uh, the rugby, but before that, You've got so many affiliates. You've got an affiliate with FIFA, with NBA. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> but so many top, you know, institutions. How did they? I, I, really more come up I have with more them? logos than you. <laughs> yeah, I have more logos than you. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But how, yeah. how how did that marriage come about? Well, initially, we um, our main business is corporation. So we have last year we had three hundred twenty-five clients. Wow. Okay, 80% of them are multinational companies uh, working in Africa. So okay. amongst of clients, you have Coca-Cola, Nestle, uh, mm. Netflix, Facebook, uh, Meta now, uh, a lot of uh, mm. uh, multinational companies active on the continent. Mm. And also African companies like, mm. uh, you know, Ecobank or Liquid Intelligence Technology, etc. Okay. But uh, in 2017, really, mm. we uh, started to, uh, uh, I mean, I started, I decided that I wanted to look at uh, uh, sport as a business, you know. Okay. So I wanted to see what kind of opportunity were there. Uh, I understand sport was not only a business, mm -hmm. right, but it was also a business. And so um, we contacted uh, uh, Rugby Africa and we hooked up a partnership with them. Uh, it was, uh, we worked with them pro bono initially. Mm -hmm. It was our, let's say, our, our way to uh, uh, venture in that area of sport, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, it gave us a sense of uh, who is doing what, who are the players, what are the, what is that, what are the stakes, etc., etc. Yeah. And uh, down the line, uh, I think uh, two years after that, we actually signed uh, a contract with uh, NBA. Uh, okay. As you may know, NBA announced that they are well, launching the Basketball Africa League. Yeah. So we signed with NBA uh, in Africa. Then we signed with the Basketball Africa League. Mm. Uh, after that, we signed with FIFA. So we are the Pan-African Public Relations Agency of FIFA okay. since uh, three years now. Wow. Uh, managing all the public relations of FIFA across the entire continent. Okay. Uh, and we also, we also have a partnership with Olympique de Marseille. Okay. Uh, as I said, I already mentioned Rugby Africa. We have Seed also, which is an mm. NGO based uh, out in uh, Senegal, which is using sport for education and development. Okay. So uh, sport is uh, sport is big, and, and uh, I almost forgot. Uh, we also have a, a big partnership with Vivendi Sport. Okay. Vivendi Sport is a subsidiary of Vivendi Group. It's a 16 billion turnover uh, uh, revenue uh, company. Not CDs, uh, dollars. <laughs> yeah. sure. uh, they own Universal Music Group, uh, mm. Canal Plus, uh, Avas, etc. Okay. And they, for instance, right now, I was in Ghana. Uh, I came with the, uh, the, the CEO of Event Sport. Uh, they are organizing, for instance, right now the um, uh, Africa Cup of Nations in Ivory Coast. Okay. They recently organized the uh, Jeux de la Francophonie mm. in Kinshasa. As you know, it's a, it's a Olympic game of the Francophone world, yeah. let's say, let's put it yeah. that way. Yeah. Uh, so they are big in sport, they are supporting um, uh, uh, countries in their bidding process mm. uh, to attract uh, uh, sport uh, events. Okay. You know, uh, a lot of countries um, see a lot of value in sport tourism. Mm. Morocco is big on this, Rwanda is big on this. Okay. Uh, how to, uh, as a government, how you bid to host international sports events to have uh, more people traveling, more tourists, and more people, they come for uh, 
they are coming for the uh, competition, but then if they like it, they may come back with a family, etc. And even when they are here for the competition, they are spending money in hotels. Uh, so sport tourism is a, is a huge uh, phenomenon across, uh, across the continent. And as you know, Africa as it stands, Africa never, never welcomed that many, that number of international sport competitions. Mm. Um, I'm sure you're aware that Rwanda is going to host the uh, World Cycling Championship. Yeah. I usually have to repeat that two times so people can believe me. <laughs> you know, to people to connect, uh, you know, mm. Rwanda is going to host the World yeah. Cycling Championship. Mm. Uh, it's not a local uh, national competition. Absolutely. The world, world. Yeah. the world of cycling we gather to, uh, to Rwanda. Rwanda. You probably also know that for the very first time, Africa is going to host an Olympic competition. Yeah with the uh, Youth Olympic Games in Dakar. Yeah. Uh, you also know that Egypt, um, three, four months ago, announced that they were bidding towards the Olympic Games. Absolutely. So um, that plus uh, our own continental competitions. Mm. Um, I know the Africa Cup of Nations is referred to as the largest sport event in Africa. In Africa, absolutely. Uh, no, you can, you can scratch sport from the sentence. Mm. It's the largest event in Africa, period. <laughs> period. You have 24, six countries, one month and a half. Mm. Uh, I mean, uh, the CEO of Vivendi Sport was telling me that only the volunteers, it's 14,000 people, mm. only the volunteers, mm. 14,000, mm. 14,000. You need to uh, accommodate, you need to transport, you need to feed during one month and a half. Wow. You need to train before that, mm. you know. So, um, so uh, sport, as I, I want to uh, quote the, 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 the president of Rugby Africa, mm. the Ghanaian Herbert Mensah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, as he said everywhere, as he mentioned recently on, at the Bloomberg event, where he was a, a guest speaker at the Bloomberg event, he mm. said, well, sport is big business. Mm. Uh, big business. Uh, well, that's a fact. Absolutely. Uh, sport is big business. There is a huge ecosystem which is in the making right now. Mm. Uh, venue management, uh, media, uh, by bidding, bidding but, process, etc. Yeah, but then let's talk about the Rugby Africa. Yep. I'm sure that many Africans know that rugby is mainly played, I mean, in abroad. But then... If there's, there's a finger in here in Africa, are they receiving it as it should be in Africa? Yeah, I mean, there is, there is a lot of potential. You know, mm. as we speak right now, uh, the phenomenon is like uh, 10 years ago, the multinational company, I'm talking corporations. Okay. Well, let, let's go back like 15 years ago. Mm. 15 years ago, we had the uh, front page of The Economist, Africa is the hopeless continent. Okay. No one is looking at Africa as a potential market or whatever. Mm. Now, during the last 10 years, everyone is looking at Africa as a market. I mean, NBA is launching a league. NBA is a corporation, not a sport federation. It's a yeah. corporation. Yeah. They're launching a league outside of the US. They are not launching it in Europe or Asia, whatever. They're launching it in Africa. Mm. Uh, Pepsi Cola, uh, two years ago, said we are investing $1 billion because we cannot leave Africa which is going to be 40% of all humanity by 2100, according, according to the United Nations. Okay. We cannot leave that huge market to Coca-Cola, so we're investing. I mean, everyone is investing uh, on the African continent. Okay. Those were the corporation. Now, during the last five years, what you see is that the sports federation, the International Sports Federation, mm. they are reading the same documents okay. and the corporation. And the documents are the report from the UN, which said that by 2100, Africa will be 40% of all humanity. Yes. So do you want all those uh, people to play football or all to play basketball or all to play rugby or all to play etc. etc. Fact is, the population will be so huge that there will be, uh, there will be enough for everyone. Mm. Uh, but uh, all the sports federations have, have uh, 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 you know, uh, identified that uh, Africa is a, is a huge uh, uh, stake for them. You know, they need to be there. Now, when it comes to, uh, to rugby, well, uh, as the president of Rugby Africa, again, Gany and I mentioned, yeah. uh, uh, we believe that uh, World Rugby, which is a governing body of rugby in Africa, mm -hmm. uh, is not, uh, they are not, um, what can I say that? They, they, they need uh, maybe to uh, rethink the strategy okay. throughout the continent. They are not really truly taking account. They are not uh, 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 maybe understanding really how Africa is their future. Okay. Not only because of the, uh, the huge population. Oh, well, but yeah. from, from when it started until now, mm -hmm. has there been any significant improvement? Well, there have been. You know, uh, um, it, if, I'm, if I'm correct, if my memory is, is correct, in, 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 2002, mm. in 2002, there were six countries affiliated to Rugby Africa and to World Rugby, six, 2002. Mm. Today, there are 37. Let's give, wow. you, let's give you a figure, wow. right? I'd like to remind you that the current uh, 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 champion of the world of rugby is South Africa. This is Africa. South Africa is Africa, right? Yeah. Last time I checked. Yeah. And they are three-time winner. Wow. 
So uh, no, rugby is, is, is getting momentum, and, mm. and there, there are reasons for that. I mean, you probably heard about the uh, United Nations Sustainable, uh, Sustainable Development Goals of the UN. United Nations Nation. uh, yeah. Sustainable Development Goals. And you know that uh, uh, those goals are big in terms of uh, uh, diversity, inclusivity, et cetera, et cetera. Well, think about, um, um, uh, for instance, women, uh, inclusion of women and diversity, right? Mm. Um, look at a football team of women. If you look at, if you take the, the shorter player and the taller players, the difference will be five, six centimeters, 10 centimeters. Mm. If you look at their weight, uh, the, the weight will be, uh, the difference will be, I don't know, 10, maybe 15 kilos. Now yeah. take the, the team of women rugby and look at the shortest player and the tallest player. Okay. Well, the difference will be huge. You know that, right? Yeah. Well, the weight will be the same. Yeah. The difference will be huge. Yeah. You know that, right? Yeah, exactly. Because rugby is the only sport, the only team sport, and if you know another one, tell me, where uh, big, tall, small, short, uh, etc., everyone is welcome. Absolutely. Everyone can play, can play, can play his role. Yeah. You can be a, a woman which is like, a, uh, you know, big, uh, like a 1 meter, 95, 110 kilos. On the field, you're going to be valued. Mm. In the... In the world, maybe, you know, on Instagram, you're going to be shamed, you're going to be uh, people with point finger at you, etc., etc. On the field, you're going to be a queen. You're going to be a queen. People will celebrate you. Okay. How you're powerful, etc., etc. All right. So if you, if you know rugby a little bit, you know that uh, uh, we need uh, all sorts of people. Absolutely. We need uh, uh, tall people, short people, uh, strong Sparky people, etc., etc. Et Anybody so, can so, play. So, so in that sense, definitely rugby is the most including inclusive sport. Okay. Right? All right. Thank you. Uh, but finally, before we go, um, uh, what is the latest uh, that APO Group actually bringing on board and what should we expect from them? What do you mean? I mean, about... What's the latest uh, with the APO Group mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. are they bringing on board? What's the latest with them and what should we expect oh, from them? For, from Rugby Africa? Yeah. Well, we, I mean, I mean, it's, 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 it's interesting that I'm here in Ghana. As you know, uh, uh, Rugby Africa just elected a new president, and that president is uh, Herbert Mensah, which is a Ghanaian, very well-known sport administrator yeah. and businessman here. I will tell you one thing. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, I and myself uh, uh, um, started to be involved with Rugby Africa, the governing body of rugby in Africa, in mm. 2017. Okay. Herbert Mensah had been elected uh, four months ago. Mm. That man did more in three months than the previous president did in five years. Wow. I don't know, you Ghanaians, you might be good or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, uh, he's, uh, and, and he, has, he, has, uh, he has a drive, he has a vision, mm. he's a former entrepreneur. Mm. Uh, he knows what he wants. He is uh, he's, he's, uh, he's a blessing mm. for African rugby. Mm. You asked me a, a few minutes ago uh, if uh, rugby has developed in the past. Yeah. Um, if you sit with Herbert Mensah, watch a few of his interviews, you will understand that uh, uh, it doesn't matter what happened in the past. But what, wait and see what's going to happen in the coming years. Absolutely. You know, so it's, it's about that. So, uh, you know, when you're uh, lucky enough to have the right president for a sport federation, a continental sport federation, mm -hmm. making the right choice, having a vision, uh, sky is the limit, really. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Nicholas uh, Pompey Monarch, uh, for your time today. Uh, I mean, I'm you, sure. You didn't say it the same way. Yeah? You, did. <laughs> you said it three times. So, and, and each time was different, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but forgive me, forgive me for no that. Problem, no uh, problem. But then, it's, uh, I mean, it's been absolutely incredible having you uh, here. My but any time you come to Ghana, you could, I uh, may as well come, come by. Back. And so we can I will come back when that will be a rugby ball. Absolutely. I will come back. Will, you want, you want be, me to come back? It would be. Make it a rugby ball. Absolutely. Or, or add, add a rugby ball. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It would it's be. okay. It's okay. Probably we can that. put it on the top. There is still room, right? So, yeah. Sure, sure. On the top somewhere. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Nicholas. But that's it for all the cards today. But before that,